God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. Well, good evening, church family and friends, loved ones, visitors. Glad you didn't just uh, move on to a different page after hearing that joyful noise. Certainly a joyful noise, but it is good to be with you uh, this evening. Hope and pray that you're ready to worship God together in spirit and in truth. And uh, we know that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Glad y'all are with us tonight. Hope and pray again that you're blessed, that you're doing well. Uh, church members, uh, just make a comment. Let us know that you're here. You can like the page. You can share uh, this page uh, with others so that they too can join us uh, as we worship God together in spirit and in truth. But uh, hope and pray again that you're doing well and that you're anticipating another wonderful week from God as we have opportunities to love and to serve uh, and to uh, live a good Christian example before the world, uh, allowing Jesus to live in us and through us in all that we do and in all that we say. I want to begin tonight with some announcements and then some uh, prayer requests, so please uh, bear with me just for a moment, church folks. Uh, Y'all pay attention, uh, as always, and uh, let's share these uh, together. I want to say a big thank you. Big thank you to Becky Wilson for hosting a graduation party at our house for our two graduating seniors this year. Um, we uh, had a great time, great food, great fellowship, and got to honor two great young men, uh, Samuel Moore and Braden Bryant. So congratulations again uh, to both of you young men and your families. Uh, job well done. Also, a huge thank you uh, to all of the ladies uh, who were involved and uh, who put together a wonderful, wonderful wedding shower for my daughter, our daughter Ashlyn, uh, and uh, her soon-to-be husband Tanner uh, here at the church building yesterday. It was a drive-by, drive-through uh, type of shower, and it was beautiful. Went off very, very well. So again, thank you uh, to all those ladies. You know who you are, uh, and also to uh, to Brother Gary Hall. He, uh, he worked hard out there out front to uh, get it clean, looking pretty, and uh, well-maintained for So, Brother Gary, thank you for your part in uh, yesterday's shower. Uh, Keenan, Keenan and his mom, Cindy, have a new address. It is here uh, at the church building on our foyer table. Uh, if you'd like to get that and uh, make that update uh, for them, uh, they moved right here in town. Uh, so we want to make sure you have that address available as well. Uh, Damon and Kathy Jones. Uh, they have uh, moved out to Tyler, Texas. Uh, their at new address is also here at the church building uh, on the table as well. So you want to make sure that you get those uh, new addresses. Also, here at the church building is an address for Sister Wanda Lloyd. You can send her an encouraging card. Uh, I know she would appreciate that. Her family will uh, as we continue to pray for her. Uh, there's a lot more announcements in our bulletin. Uh, you can also check out our Facebook page. Some of those announcements and uh, updates are there as well. Uh, but if you did not get a chance to get a bulletin uh, today, there are some left. I uh, just saw several out here on the table. Uh, you can come by and get those. Also, prayer request. Now, I know there are many others that no doubt are on your heart, on your mind. Uh, so let me just share these from this morning. Uh, you're going to know others as well. So in just a moment, as we get ready to go to God in prayer together, again, I would encourage you to lift up those that are on your heart, on your mind, uh, as we join together and uh, approach the throne of God in prayer. But want to uh, pass this along to you this evening. Brother Charles Willis is home from the hospital. Uh, he is doing some better. He's got doctor's appointments that he's been to uh, and others that he's got coming up. Uh, but please remember uh, Brother Charles Willis. He was with us this morning. Uh, he and uh, Sister Narita were there with us, and that's certainly uh, wonderful to see them uh, back out together. 
Uh, our sympathy is expressed to Carl Hollinghead and his family uh, on the passing of Carl's brother, Paul, uh, this past week. Please be prayerful for them. Uh, Margaret McGuire's brother, uh, Tony Moore, uh, has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, it is uh, in his bones. Uh, we want to uh, remember him in, pray in our prayers. He will begin treatment uh, this week. Tony Chanel uh, continues to uh, deal with his stage 3 kidney disease. Uh, he uh, was with us this morning as well in our worship service, uh, but please keep him in your prayers also. Uh, we want to continue to pray for tall Karen Pierce uh, as she deals with her health issues. Uh, there are many others in our church bulletin on our church uh, prayer list uh, that is getting longer. It's getting updated nearly every week, so please uh, be mindful of these. And again, as we go to God together in prayer, uh, let us uh, join our hearts and our minds and you lift up those uh, that are on your mind as we pray together. Will you bow with me? Our Holy Father in heaven, we bow in your presence tonight indeed thankful for your love and your tender mercy. Father, for the opportunity to once again gather together uh, on this beautiful Lord's Day evening to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray for uh, each of these that we have uh, mentioned here even tonight, for Brother Charles Willis, uh, for uh, the family of Carl Hollinghead, uh, and also for uh, Tony Moore and his family. Uh, Father, we want to pray for Tony Chanel and uh, also for Tall Karen Pierce. Father, we continue to pray for uh, Wanda Lloyd as she um, works with uh, occupational therapy and physical therapy. And uh, Father, we just pray for uh, recovery, for progress made in her health. Dear God, for each of these that we've mentioned and, and so many others, dear God, that, that are on our hearts and our minds that are being lifted up before you uh, even right now as we join together uh, in, in our time of prayer to you. Father, we know that you are the great physician. We know that you're in absolute sovereign control and that your will will be done. Father, we pray for a stronger, deeper faith to trust you even more and to accept your will in our lives and for our lives that we'd always look to you for wisdom, for guidance, for strength, uh, in, in living out a faithful Christian life and serving uh, the world around us. Father, we just uh, thank you so much tonight for your son Jesus, uh, for the sacrifice that he made at the cross. Father, we, we come before you uh, in, in prayer on behalf of this great country. Dear God, we know that there is a lot of chaos and confusion and turmoil. Dear God, a lot of violence and wickedness all through the land. Father, we pray uh, for a, a, a revival. Our hearts would be turned back to you, dear God, and that, that you would be put back in your rightful place and that we would truly once again be one nation under God. And Father, we pray for our leaders uh, from, from the, the president all the way down to all of our local leaders. Father, we pray your blessings of wisdom and boldness and courage to stand for what is right. Dear God, to, to do those things that, that would bring us back into a, a good standing uh, with you that we once again could be uh, one nation under God and that we could uh, prevail over this wickedness. Father, help us to, to be busy doing good and spreading good uh, works and good deeds uh, that uh, we might, as your scripture teaches us, that we might not be overcome by evil, but that we might overcome evil with good. Father, we pray that you'll be with us tonight as we study your word. Father, open our hearts and our minds uh, to your word. May our minds and our hearts be receptive and uh, fertile soil uh, will allow the, the roots and the, the seed to take place. Uh, in our lives, that it might grow and produce fruit uh, to your honor and to your glory. Father, uh, we thank you for times like this, that we can come together and that we can uh, be drawn closer to each other, that we can be drawn closer to you and have a, a deeper, better understanding of your word. Uh, and again, Father, we want to just say thank you for Jesus, uh, for it's through him that we humbly pray and seek your forgiveness and your grace and your tender mercy on our lives. Because, Father, we know, we know that without Jesus, uh, we are still lost and dying in our sins. We know that his blood is the only power available to us to have our sins washed away. And Father, we pray for that cleansing. And again, Father, we pray that in all that we do and all that we say tonight, it will be done in, in a, a spirit of, of uh, love and, and humility and that we will seek your truth in all that we do. For it's through Christ we humbly pray. Amen. All right, church folks, it is good to uh, see everyone here tonight. Go ahead, and if you will, 
I know that you've got a Bible out there. I don't know who's got one, but I'm going to ask you to go ahead and uh, uh, hold it up and uh, hope and pray that uh, uh, you are ready to study the Word of God. I like to know who is armed uh, and dangerous. I want to share a song with you tonight as we get started. That song is Anywhere is Home. Anywhere is Home. So give me just a, just a moment here and uh, we will be uh, sharing this song together. Uh, Jay, I see it's you and Kathy and uh, Caitlin and also Libby Jo. Thank you for watching, little lady.
Well, I don't know about you, but that's an oldie but goodie right there. And uh, again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you all church folks and whomever you may be watching and listening. I like to read the comments uh, that you're watching. Uh, maybe you're uh, logging in and you're commenting where you're from, where you're listening from. Or uh, maybe you are just making a comment in general as we get started tonight. But nonetheless, as we get started tonight, though, I do want to uh, share what I'm just going to call some homespun humor, maybe a little bit of homespun wisdom. Let me share this uh, with you tonight as we get rolling uh, in our lesson. Troubles in marriage often start when a man gets so busy earning salt that he forgets his sugar. Here's another one for you. Too many couples marry for better or for worse, but not for good. Too many couples marry for better or for worse, but not for good. Well, again, I hope and pray that you're ready to study the Word uh, of God together. And as, as we open up our, our lesson time together tonight, I want you to think back to all this quarantine uh, during our quarantine time, uh, being isolated and confined a lot to our homes, uh, all the social distancing that has started and is continuing, uh, the wearing of masks, hand sanitizer, washing our hands, not touching our face, all of those things. I'm still there probably fresh on your minds. But do you remember when the churches started to decide that it might be safe and uh, cautious uh, to shut down services and go to things like Facebook Live or Zoom or other social media outlets to uh, uh, assemble together and to share worship time uh, together. Well, churches have decided to uh, have services only uh, online from time to time to help limit the gathering of, of large groups together. Uh, the point has been made a lot of times as we think about that, as we talk about that, and uh, elders and uh, uh, church folks make decisions and uh, uh, consider uh, loving their neighbor from a distance. Uh, the point has been brought up, the question has even been asked, uh, that the church is not a building. The church is not the building. In fact, statements have been made, bumper stickers, t-shirts, uh, the uh, Facebook messages have gone out that say the church has left the building. Raise your hand if you ever heard that one. The church has left the building. I'm sure hands are going up right now. I can see a few of them. The church has left the building. Well, you see, getting out of the four walls of the physical church building is absolutely essential to the ongoing life and work of the Christian and of the church itself as a whole. We've got to get out of the four walls of a church building. You see, the, the church is not really an organization, but rather it is a living organism. It is active and alive. It is to be visible and effective, influencing the world for the cause of Christ. And so tonight I want you to think with me. For just a little while, as Christians, you and I as Christians, we are individual members of the church, the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27. We can't get around that. We, we are individually members of the body of Christ, like a, like a baseball team. Yes, you are a team, but there's also different positions, different team members who function and work in different positions on that team in the field. Maybe they're the pitcher or catcher. First base, second base, shortstop, third base, left field, right field, center field, whatever it may be. You're an individual member of that team. Christians, you and I, we are individually members of the body of Christ. God's team, if you will. And so the, the question has been asked or, or uh, put out there uh, many different times on, on different occasions. And that is, if the church is not the building, then why have a building? You know, they want to know. What's the purpose? Why, why do you have a church building? They will even take the matter a little bit further and ask, what authority do you have uh, for even having a church building? And so they want to know. They want to know, 
we want to know, we should know and understand this great question. Why, why do we have church buildings? Well, I think it's a great question. I think it's important for us to uh, understand, explore it tonight, and let's, let's begin to answer the question from God's Word. And again, the question is, why do we have church buildings? Well, within the Lord's Church, the Churches of Christ, we believe that having authority, authority for the things that we do, for what we practice, for what we preach, is absolutely essential. And I want to share some, some thoughts tonight from a very short article uh, that was written by Victor Eskew. It was shared out on Facebook uh, a while back. And it's absolutely essential that we understand that we must have authority. I guess you could say permission. The authority to practice and preach what God would have us to practice and preach. For example... Paul wrote in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, to, to the church at Colossae. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now I want you to think about that statement. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, Notice that now. Whatever you do. Paul said it doesn't really matter. Whatever you do. But he got more specific next. He said in word or in deed. Whatever you preach and teach. Whatever you practice or do. He says do all. Do everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now. This statement. Whatever you do. Word or in deed. He said, do all. These are all-inclusive words. Let everything that you do, let everything that you speak, teach, preach, let it all be done with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that's a great statement. That is a powerful, authoritative statement. This phrase means, by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It would be very similar, my friends, to the phrase that is used a lot of times by law enforcement. When, when they say, stop in the name of the law. You know what they mean? They mean stop by the authority of the law. So, many times people will ask, they will ask, if you believe you must have authority for all that you do, then where is the authority to have a church building? And again, a great question. A great question. Where is the authority for having a church building? They might press the matter just a little bit more. And they might even point out and say that there is no passage of Scripture that says, Thou shalt have a church building building. And you'd be exactly right. There is no scripture that says thou shalt have a church building. And these, these folks many times were guilty as well. Never really studied the subject of biblical authority. And one of the first places we need to start, one of the first basic principles of studying the word of God that we must understand is the difference between specific authority and general, or sometimes called generic, specific and general authority. Now I want you to think about a very, very practical, well-known Bible character. The patriarch Noah. Anybody ever heard of good old Noah built an ark like God told him to? We sing that song sometimes in uh, little kids' Bible classes, sometimes even during vacation Bible school. But I want you to think about Noah for just a moment as an example. In, in fact, in Genesis chapter 6, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter number 6. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 14, uh, God commanded this patriarch, Noah, saying this, Make an ark of gopher wood. God is telling Noah specifically what to do. 
make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now, in this scripture, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 14, there is both general authority and also specific authority. Let's break it down and look at it. Let's process this together. The general authority would be, make thee an ark. God told Noah, make an ark. Well, within that command, that general authority, within that general command that God gave Noah to build or to make an ark, uh, was the need for all kinds of different tools to actually make and construct that ark. Now, it would also uh, have involved help. Noah couldn't build that ark all by himself on his own. He's going to need help, the assistance of other people, possibly even his sons, maybe even work animals might have been needed to carry supplies to the work site where that ark was actually being built. A lot would have gone into doing what God said to do, to make the an ark. Now, all of these things, although they're not specifically commanded, they are included in the general command to make an ark. God was giving Noah the authority to do what was necessary, to use what was needed to make an ark. Now, there are, though, some specific commands, specific authority. God said, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Of gopher wood. Now, God was, God was very specific regarding the type of wood that he wanted Noah to use in building this ark. And when God specified gopher wood, guess what he had already done in making that specific command of gopher wood? He's eliminated every other kind of wood that would have been available. Noah was told by God, only use gopher wood. Other woods, no doubt, were available, but they could not be used because God commanded gopher wood. So when God said gopher wood, he didn't have to say, now Noah, use gopher wood, so don't use cypress or whatever other woods might have been available to Noah. God said specifically, use gopher wood. He didn't have to say what not to use. Why? Because church, he said what to use. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. And Noah understood. We need to understand that even today. There was not to be one beam or one plank of any other kind of wood in that ark. Now, now where, where do we get our authority for church buildings? Let's get hone in on this question. Let's get right to the question. Where do we get the authority for church buildings? Well, there is no specific authority. Going back to the example of Noah. Noah was told, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Specifically, what wood to use for Noah? There is no specific authority for church buildings. However, we do have general authority. Just like when God told Noah, make thee an ark. So there's no specific authority, but there is what we call general, generic authority. And we're going we're to explore that for a few minutes. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, if you want to go ahead and turn in your Bibles uh, to Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25, uh, the, the writer of Hebrews exhorts his readers with these words. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, as the habit or custom of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we understand, I believe, that the church is to assemble for worship on the Lord's day. The writer says here in this verse, not forsaking the assembling, the gathering together, of ourselves. All right, so we are to gather together. We are to assemble on the Lord's day. I want you to read with me. You turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to see a couple more verses here on, on the fact that the church, not the church building, the church, you and I as individual Christians, members of the Lord's church, members of the body of Christ, we must assemble together. 
Just like God told Noah, make thee an ark of gopher wood. General and specific authority was involved in the making of that ark. Involved in Noah obeying God. Well, God has commanded us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. God wants us and has instructed us to assemble. Look with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to read verse 18 and then verse 20. Paul writes this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 18. For first of all, when you come together as a church, notice it's when and not if. When you come together as a church, congregation, and assembly, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. Verse number 20. Look at verse 20. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat. It is not to eat the Lord's Supper. So, Paul says, when you come together. And then he said in verse 20, when you come together in one place. This general command to assemble, to assemble on the Lord's day, it necessitates a few needs. If we're going to do what God has said to do, then we've got to have a place to assemble. Uh, the body of Christ has to know where it is to go to assemble. And so for this reason, the local congregations of the Lord's people have built buildings throughout our nation all over the world for this main purpose. So like here at the Op Church of Christ, our old building, uh, if you're familiar with Op, is almost directly across the street from uh, the police station. You know that brick building that's now the uh, Senior Activity Center? Church building was built way back in 1901. Now our new location, built nearly 40 years ago, if not just a little bit longer, right out here at 901 East Hart Avenue at the intersection of Hart and Malloy, just down from the high school, just down from Benton's Restaurant. Big old brick building. Why was it built? Well, the main reason, one of the many main reasons, was so that the, those who are members of the Lord's Church here in Op can meet together at one location. That serves the purpose. Church folks, you know where to go. Sunday morning at 1030. If you're going to assemble with the body of Christ, there's got to be a location and you know where to come to. Sunday night, Wednesday night, you know where to go to for the assembling together of the Lord's people. And so please understand, it's not, again, specific authority uh, that necessitates our church buildings. But rather, it is the general uh, authority. Just like God told Noah, make thee an ark. That's general. Of gopher wood. Specific. God has commanded that we assemble together. Well, that's general. We've got to have a place. God wants us to, to gather together. So we've got to have a place. Got to have a place to, to gather together. So it is that general authority uh, that allows for us to, to have a building of, of some kind. So again, the question might now be, well, could the church assemble elsewhere as the body of Christ? Do they have to have a church building? Well, actually, the answer is yes. For example, in Acts chapter 20, verse number 8, we read that Paul assembled with the church in Troas in an upper room. In an upper room. Maybe it was a, a larger house that had a, an upper room. Maybe a second, maybe even a third story room big enough to allow those who were there to meet together. Now, in the first days of the Christian dispensation, the, the Christian age, uh, the church assembled at the temple for worship. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And again in Acts chapter 2, verse number 46. The church would meet there within the temple. Anywhere that, that can accommodate the local church can be used for the Lord's Day assembly. Now, 
I've heard of, and I'm sure many of you have heard of uh, churches, bodies of Christ meeting together in maybe school buildings or, or may, maybe in a, an old business, or maybe it's a, a business that's not open on Sunday, so they allow the, the church to come in, hold their services. You see, it's often difficult to just find a place uh, to accommodate the assembly. Many times those places are, are maybe too small to accommodate the local congregation. Maybe the congregation is too big. And they can't find an adequate space. Well, may, maybe some of the rent, maybe they're, the local church is trying to maybe rent a space, a building, a house, wherever it may be. They're trying to rent a place, but the rent is maybe too much, too expensive. It would be more feasible, economical, if you will, if they did build their own church building. Well, places sometimes that are donated... Uh, to be used for the church can actually be uh, taken away just as quickly as they are given. Think about outdoor spaces. Sometimes outdoor spaces have problems due to the weather. And we know here in South Alabama how quickly the weather can change. So tents. Tents are often uh, very rustic and they're not very accommodating. Meeting outside is very unpredictable, and even when the weather does cooperate, it can be either really hot, really windy, really cold. You just never know. It may all happen on one day around here. You just never know. And so, for a lot of those reasons and many others, uh, most congregations have chosen to build their own buildings to accommodate the need uh, to assemble. So, do we have authority for a church building well, the answer is yes. Yes. You might be asking, well, where is that authority? Well, in the command to the local church to assemble for worship on the Lord's day, just like God gave Noah the command to make the an ark of gopher wood, there is general authority, general authority and specific authority. In the case of why do we have church buildings, the specific authority is assemble together on the Lord's day. Well, the general authority is do what you've got to do to assemble. And a lot of times that's going to be build a building. Small building, big building, whatever is needed for the local congregation. But again, tonight we've been talking about authority. We go back to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, where Paul, writing to the church at Colossae, told them, And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of, that is, in the authority of, by the authority of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And so, the command again is to assemble together. Boy, you got to have a where. you got to have a location you got to have a central spot, a place, a meeting place for that assembly to gather together and assemble. So, again, the specific command, the specific authority here for us is assemble. Gather together for worship on the Lord's day. And so the, the general authority that we have for church buildings helps us in doing what God said to do. Some great questions when you think about everything uh, in the Word of God. And you know what, church folks? Questions are how we learn. But we must have authority. We must have that authority, whether it's general authority or whether it's specific authority. We must have authority. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for all that we do, we must have God's approval, God's instruction. Sometimes that instruction, as we've seen even here tonight, is general. Many times it is specific, like with Noah. Will you bow with me as we pray? Father God, we thank you for your love and for your tender mercy. Father, we thank you for times like this when we can gather together and assemble together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that you'll help us to, to take your truth, your word, uh, and uh, hide it in our hearts so we might not sin against you. Dear God, we, we thank you for um, helping us 
uh, by sharing your word with us, writing it and recording it, uh, revealing it to us through the power of your Holy Spirit, preserving it for us even here uh, today. Dear God, that we might have it, that we might grow uh, in our knowledge, that we might have the wisdom we need, dear Father, to, to follow you and obey you. Father, we thank you for uh, what your scriptures reveal to us and teach us. Father, give us a desire to, to dig into your word, to study and to rightly divide, that we might be that workman who does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing uh, your word of truth. Dear God, help us to know that we can uh, know your truth uh, and, and that knowing your truth will set us, set us free. But Father, we pray that you will help us. Help us, dear God, to, to seek and to search for uh, your authority, uh, general or specific, uh, for everything that we do, for all that we preach and teach, for all that we practice and do. Father, may, may it all be in accordance to your will. Dear God, may it be in spirit and in truth that you will be honored and glorified in all that we do. Uh, Father, we thank you. We thank you most of all again here tonight for your son Jesus, and it's through him that we humbly pray. Amen. Oh, church folks, what a great question. What a great question. And I know there are many others, and, and we're going to be looking at several of those here uh, in the near future. But I want to encourage you uh, this week, uh, remember uh, to check on other people. Uh, check on your church family, your friends, neighbors, uh, people across the street, co-workers, there's needs, there's people struggling and hurting, uh, decisions have been made that impact their lives. There's a lot of um, situations happening, a lot of people who are struggling, who are down and out. Maybe you're one of them. We're here for you. Church folks, church family, loved ones, if you need me, call me, send me a message, reach out to me. I want to serve, but you got to tell me how, what I can do. Uh, also, church family here at Op, please know that our elders, uh, they are available. They are your shepherds. They're my shepherds. They want to serve and take care of you and help you in any way, but you got to let them know. Don't struggle alone. Don't, don't try to shoulder something all by yourself. You don't have to. We're brothers and sisters. We're the family of God, the body of Christ. We're on the same team. Let us help if we can. Just let us know. Let them know. Uh, but again, we love you. God bless you. Looking forward to Wednesday night. Uh, Lord willing, be right back here, 6 o'clock for our Bible study time. We're looking at how to be the church. How to be the church. Last week was focused on love, being a brotherhood of love. Well, we're going to explore uh, how to be the church at a different level, in a different way this coming Wednesday night. So I encourage you to join us, Lord willing. Looking forward to a great week and the opportunities that God is going to give us to serve and to uh, love our neighbor. But y'all take care. Be safe. Be careful. Uh, may God bless you, and we'll be back with you soon. We love you. Take care.